Review question four. The accompanying diagram shows a section of a sound wave as displayed on an oscilloscope. And for those of you who are, wa are wondering what an oscilloscope is, basically it's a device for viewing oscillations. And this is a short um, picture of an oscilloscope. Okay, which equation could best represent this particular graph? Is it one? Y is equivalent to two, the cosine of X over two. Is it two? Y is equivalent to two, the sine of X over two. Is it three? Y is equivalent to one half, the cosine of two X. Or is it four? Y is equivalent to one half, the sine of two X. Definitely press pause and I'll give you a moment to think and come up with a solution. All right, so hopefully by now you were able to press pause and draft out a solution. And if not, that's completely fine. Let's try this out together. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to recommend is that it's helpful to extend this graph to the right. Okay, and when x is equivalent to um, zero, the graph is going to be at its, at its maximum, okay? And um, this is basically a part of a cosine wave. By now, you should know the difference in how a cosine wave will look as opposed to a sine wave. Sine waves pass through the origin unless they have a um, vertical shift or a phase shift, okay? And uh, um, cosine waves usually pass through their um, the absolute value of um, the the curve, the absolute value of the amplitude. So this could have been like negative two as well, depending on whether or not there's a phase shift. All right, sorry for that holdup. Okay, so the amplitude is the distance from the center line to the maximum value. And here we see that it's two, okay? So um, we just keep that in mind that the amplitude has a value of two, okay? So when x equals zero, we have an amplitude that's equivalent to two. And this is the general equation for a cosine wave y, the uh, dependent variable, is going to be equivalent to a the amplitude this should really be um, posted up between absolute value signs so let's just draw them in real quickly the absolute value of a times the cosine of bx and also the absolute value of b as well and b or the absolute value of b rather is um, the frequency and basically it's the number of complete cycles between the interval, well, with that pass through the interval of zero to two pi, okay? So that's basically um, what uh, the frequency is. And you'll notice here, you should, uh, prior to this problem, you should definitely know what a cosine wave is. And if you're familiar with the shape of a cosine wave, you'll see that exactly half a cycle fits in the interval between x is equivalent to zero and x is equivalent to two pi. So therefore, the frequency is going to be um, one half. Again, between, we're, between zero and two pi for x, we have an interval of one half, okay? So b is one half, and we said earlier that the amplitude, the absolute value of a is going to be two, Therefore, our equation is y equals two because the amplitude or the absolute value of the amplitude is two um, times the cosine of one half x, okay? Where b represents the frequency. That's the um, coefficient associated with the x, okay? So let's go over to our answer choices. This looks like it's going to be basically Answer choice one, okay? So let's go ahead and highlight that. 
So the correct answer choice is going to be answer choice one. <laughs> Sorry for my janky highlighting skills. But yeah, just so you get the point, it's not a sine wave. So don't make the mistake of choosing sine. And, you know, these have the frequencies interchanged with the um, amplitude. So they're wrong. Okay. All right. So thanks for your time. And let's get on to the next problem. And don't forget to order the complete cram session. The viewing of this will not be available forever. And definitely spread the words to your friends, families, whoever it is that you know that needs to review Algebra 2 and other subject areas as well. Don't forget to email me at memedicine at gmail.com. All right.